use the very tip of the brush and just a tiny bit of color on the brush to create the edge of the eye. using a touching motion, taking the color right over the pupil, and you can still see the pupil. Use a very gentle touch. So I'd like to create some of that orange red right here, and I'll lay in the yellow first. And I'll also lay it in right along the top of where the beak splits. I'll lay this red over the entire beak. So starting down here, this is very pale. It represents the lightest value that I see in the beak. So I'll lay in this consistency of T everywhere. Now that it's damp, rinse your brush, wipe it on the towel so the brush is just barely damp, and pick up the consistency of whole milk to thin cream. So I'll touch in the color down there and just allow it to spread on its own. And lay in a glaze over the entire beak. And that makes the beak appear overall more red, which I like. This yellow is going anywhere that I see that red that leans towards orange. Lay the color in the center of the shape, and then you can guide it where you'd like it to go. And again, we can take it right over what will be the black. That's the consistency of somewhere between thin milk and tea. And you want to create the curve of the hairs that you see. Use the tip of the brush and create longer hairs and shorter hairs. This will serve as a guide when you go darker in value. I'll take the color right into what will be the dark shape bring it out just a little bit and I'm working on one small area at a time so there's time to rinse the brush wipe it on the towel and soften so by going darker in value there we're creating the impression of a curve a slight curve Here's the shadow area. I drew that line in the drawing to serve as a guide. And what I'm going to do is create some curving hairs right here. That's the edge that I think I see. Okay, there 
there's the edge and I just need to fill that in but first I'll rinse the brush, wipe it on the towel, and just soften that side. Right around here, we want some curving. Do you see how that gray on the palette creates a dark brown on the paper. That's what I was aiming for. The first layer of hairs and feathers is in place, and we're ready for the next layer, and we'll go darker in value. What I'm going to do is go back in and reinforce the darker reds. The reds that indicate where curve and shadow is happening, such as right here. So if you remember, I wanted to create the impression of a curve coming out of the black shape, because I think the head is curving here. The idea here is to slightly smooth the textures and unify everything. And if you want to, you can use this glaze to take areas darker. I'm using such a gentle touch that I'm barely touching the brush to the paper. And I'm applying this glaze in the direction of the hairs. And as I move away from the beak, I'm beginning to just thin out the color because I want it to be lighter in value up there. And that's smoothing texture slightly over this shape. Actually, just over the ends, I think in the middle, just smooth everything with my damp brush using water. Pick up straight ultramarine blue, the consistency of thin cream. That's what I'm looking for. I'm using a slightly thicker consistency. So this is like thin cream and what appears blue on the palette is creating a beautiful brownish black on the paper. What I'd like to do is 
just make that line a little thicker. I'm using a touching motion, applying the color with the tip of the brush. And we'll see how that looks when it dries. If I pick up some ultramarine blue, the consistency of whole milk, maybe I can bring some very thin hairs out just a little further. But I think these very thin hairs will help to create a smoother transition into the red. And there it is. Sign your work and enjoy your painting. Thanks for joining me.